Here are some prepping and survival lessons or tips we can learn from the movie World War Z. First off, what we can learn from the beginning of the movie is that you need to have alternate routes to leave your area. When they were in the car, there was a traffic jam. Now, they may or may not have known that there was a traffic jam or a possible issue going on, but the dad, Jerry, and the rest of the family were watching the news, so he should have gotten some sort of idea that something isn't right. So with that, he could have decided to stay home, or if he was leaving, he could have used a different route than the one everyone else was on. So pay attention to the news, stay at home if you're aware of some sort of emergency going on, and always have an alternative route. Something else that we can see is that the dad was relatively calm despite the situation. If he was panicking and not thinking clearly, the family wouldn't have survived the first few minutes of the outbreak. I know it's easier said than done, but staying calm and thinking clearly is extremely important in emergencies. The next problem we see is the daughter having an issue with her asthma. Now what can we learn from this? Always have your medication with you and if possible, stock up on extras. During the middle of all the chaos, we see that the family had to stop at a pharmacy to get the medication that the daughter needed and to get food and water. If they had a good stockpile of food and water in the RV and some extra medicine, they wouldn't have to go into the pharmacy and risk their lives. As you saw, when Jerry went into the pharmacy section, he had a weapon pulled on him and the mom was attacked as well in the grocery store. So keeping extra food, water, and medicine in your vehicles is a must to avoid having to put yourself in danger for supplies you should already have. Next is to always have a self-defense tool. Luckily, Jerry had his rifle and was able to stop the guys attacking his wife at the pharmacy. He was also able to use his weapon to take out some zombies later on. Next scene, we see Jerry getting a call from that guy in a helicopter asking him where he is so that he can pick him up in the helicopter. Now, what does that show us? It shows us how important a group or emergency contacts are. You may not have someone who can pick you up in a helicopter and take you to safety, but if you have a prepper group or some friends that you made emergency plans with, you can contact them while cell phone service is working and you can meet up with them and you can help each other out as their strength in numbers. Being with a group of like-minded people is always better than being a lone wolf. Next, we see them in an apartment building and ending up in someone's house because the family was nice enough to take them in. As soon as Jerry and his family is in the house, Jerry goes and turns on their radio. So having an emergency radio is extremely important if you want to know what's going on. Ideally, something that's powered by batteries or by hand crank and not something that needs to be plugged into the wall outlet. Next, we see Jerry speaking to the father in the house and telling him that movement is life and that he and his family should leave with them, but the dad refused. Now, this advice really depends on the situation. If your location is in danger because it's being overrun by zombies, or even if there's something like flooding or a wildfire, then you have to leave. But in most cases, staying at home is your best choice because that's where you have all your food, water, self-defense gear, prepping gear, and you have shelter. Traveling with your emergency supplies, especially with a family, is extremely difficult. Realistically, if you have to walk even a mile or two with a family, it'll be a really difficult task. In the next scene, we see Jerry make a spear out of a broom handle and a kitchen knife. This teaches us that we need to learn to think outside the box, look at the supplies we have available, and improvise. I think everyone has something at home that can be used as a weapon or turned into a weapon if they have to. Next, we see Jerry make a bit of improvised armor using a magazine and taping it around his forearm. So protection is extremely important. Yes, you can make your own armor from thick magazines and books. It'll protect you from bites and maybe even a knife. But the best thing to have would be body armor that could protect from different types of ammo that you might face after SHTF. Another good piece of protective gear could be motorcycle armor. It won't protect from bullets, but it can save you from some blunt force impact and it can soften your falls as well. If you're looking for level 3 or level 4 body armor, check out the links in my link tree or go to ontariotactical.ca. We ship from Ontario, Canada. Next lesson is to stay in good shape. Now Jerry and his family did a lot of running. 
if they were extremely out of shape, they would not be able to survive that long. They probably would have gotten eaten alive in the first 10 minutes of the outbreak. And staying on that same topic, since Jerry was strong and physically fit, he was able to fight, kick, and strike the zombies when they got too close. If he was weak and frail, he would not have survived those encounters with the zombies. So you need to get fit if you want to have a better chance of protecting yourself and your kids during an emergency. Alright everyone, that's it for the video. If you noticed any other prepping or survival lessons that could be learned from World War Z, let me know in the comments.